What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video review and today we'll be taking a look at the recently launched Shadowbase 800DX from Be Quiet. Now, this case has been up for a little bit, I'd say a few weeks now, they have a few series of cases in this lineup. So this is the 800DX, I have an 800FX, two models of each of that are white and a black, so that's four. And then there's just a Shadowbase 800, which has no RGB on the front. So we're gonna jump in, take a look at all the cooling support, the things like vertical GPU support, see how well motherboards go in, and then we'll do a final build. So let's jump in and see how it all goes. The last Be Quiet case I looked at was the Darkbase Pro 900 Rev 2, and they've just launched the Darkbase Pro 901. But today, we'll be taking a look at their trimmed down version, the Shadowbase 800DX. This chassis is aimed towards a maximum airflow, 420 radiator support, and should come in at a reasonable price tag. Once again, we find Be Quiet's go-to exterior styling, which you find on just about all of their cases. Even when I reviewed their 900 Rev 2 five years ago, it still carried this similar styling. Personally, I feel it's time for something different, but I'd like to know what you think about it as well. In this lineup, we have the 800FX and the 800DX. You might be wondering, well, what's the difference between the FX and the DX, which we're taking a look at today. Essentially, the difference is the FX comes with pre-installed RGB fans and a single color palette. For example, the FX white chassis is full white, whereas on the white DX, the top IO area, side mesh, and top fan filter are black. You'll also find the DX comes with three pre-installed Pure Wings 3 140mm non-RGB fans. Unfortunately for Be Quiet, these fans do not come in white, and I feel because of this, this is why the top IO and the side mesh are done in black for a two-tone look. Or if you want a full white setup, the FX comes with all white pre-installed RGB fans, and the chassis is all white. The 800DX comes in at 522 high, 247 wide, and 552 deep, and Be Quiet are classing this as a mid-tower. Chassis materials include steel for the internal frame, PSU shroud and mesh. Plastic can be found on the internal cable cover, PSU cover air duct, as well as the front panel, mesh filters, front IO and feet. The main side panel is 4mm thick tempered glass, which is 100% clear. Unfortunately, I do not have the black model, so I can't comment on how dark the tint is on that one. While the rear side panel is made from steel, with sound dampening on the inside, which is a nice touch. Both side panels are each locked in via two thumbscrews and slide off for removal. The front of the case is clean with plenty of ventilation on both sides and the very front itself and is removed by pulling at the bottom and here we find a very very fine removable dust filter. This also gives us access to the bottom dust filter as well. RGB can also be found along each side of the front. We can't have a case in 2023 without RGB, but Be Quiet do offer the Shadowbase 800, which is the non-RGB variant. RGB control is done by the button on the front IO. This is quite basic, which just cycles through a bunch of modes. Or you can hold this button down so it can be offloaded to your motherboard's RGB header to sync with other components. A neat touch is the RGB is connected via pogo pins, which makes for a cableless system when removing the front panel. Front IO is pretty standard, and up the top you'll find a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, two USB 3.2 Type-A ports, separate microphone and headphone port, while the power button and power LED are found in the center. Inside the 800DX, we find a standard ATX layout with EATX support. No fancy removable motherboard tray or inverted layouts here. You'll need to look at the Darkbase 901 for that. Motherboard support is up to EATX, and cable routing for my test ROG X670E Extreme was a little tight for the default 24 pin routing hole. I feel this cutout should have started a little bit higher as well, but just to the right of that is a larger area to feed cables through which can be used. Be quiet have added a cable management bar, but I do find it a bit odd. Maybe it's just me, but in its default position, it easily clears ATX motherboards and seems to be in the right spot for EATX boards, but this cover can be moved over to the right for larger motherboards. For me, I would expect the left default position to be ATX and then moving it over would be for EATX. For example, this is a Strix Z790A ATX board with the cable cover in its closest spot to the motherboard. Like look, it doesn't even cover anything. It's just too far right. I feel it needs another position, one to the left, around about here. The only consumer board the cable cover works well with in the right spot is the Godlike and boards like the Asus W790 Sage. One nice touch I do like are the extra standoff holes for workstation boards if you go down that route. With that out of the way, EPS cable cutouts can be found at the top left corner and I also like the cutout in the very corner to help clean up fan cables. A large gap runs along the top of the motherboard tray for fan cables and so on. The only issue with this is there's quite a large gap from this cutout to the motherboard, so cables are quite visible if you're only going with fans along the top. 
At the bottom, there's a long cutout for motherboard header connections. You may notice that there are absolutely no rubber grommets in any of the cutouts, and I actually don't mind this. For GPU length, I had 472mm to the front radiator bracket, or 406mm to where the radiator cutout ends on the PSU shroud. As you can see, more than enough room for this Strix 4080 GPU. Also, I couldn't help notice that the GPU pushes right up against that cable bar. That's not an issue, but why not incorporate this into an anti-sag bracket as well? I think this is a good opportunity that was missed here. For waterlock GPUs, there is 175mm of clearance for GPU width, so you shouldn't have any issues here. And as you can see, with this Strix 4090 with an EK block, comfortably fits. While for CPU cooler height, I had roughly 185mm of clearance. The Shadowbase series also has built-in vertical GPU support. Well, sort of, and this was quite the nightmare. Basically, the PCI bracket area is removed and rotated 90. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, first, you need to make sure the motherboard is not installed in the case as the bracket sits behind it. Once the GPU is slotted in, I found it nearly impossible to screw down the GPU. Both top and rear fans had to be removed. Good luck if you have a top-mounted all-in-one cooler. So I thought I'll install the GPU onto the bracket first, but wait, the motherboard can't be in the case. So now I have my vertical GPU in the case with no motherboard. And once you do manage to get the card in, it's literally just hanging there with some of the worst sag I've ever seen. Also, the riser cable isn't included, which isn't a big deal, but I used VQuiet's own vertical riser kit, but this riser cable just rests on top of the PSU shroud and actually doesn't screw in. I guess it fixed the sag a bit, but the GPU can still flap around. One last area I want to touch base on in regards to GPU is this interesting air duct. Basically, you can install a 120 or 140mm fan at the bottom under the PSU shroud, and this duct redirects air straight into your GPU. Obviously, for waterblock GPUs, this wouldn't really be needed. This bracket is also removable, but once removed, I must admit, this area is kind of ugly. I wish there was a second bracket here, which could have been used for pump mounting or so on, or even just a blank plate. Moving on to PSU location, and there's not much to talk about here. PSU is found in probably the most common spot, which is at the bottom under the PSU shroud. And yes, the PSU can be installed via the rear using the PSU bracket. Rog Hyperion, take notes here. For PSU length, I had no issues here. Even the Monster Be Quiet Dark Power 1600 Watt installed with no issues at all. One nice touch was the inside of the PSU bracket does have foam padding. For storage, we have a few options. Be Quiet include a hard drive bracket that is installed in the PSU chamber. This can accommodate two drive trays, but these need to be purchased separately, which are the Be Quiet Hard Drive Cage 2 and go for about 18 US dollars each. So unfortunately, I can't really test this, but the bracket can be adjusted through positions for better flexibility. Another storage location is via the dual drive bracket behind the motherboard. This is removable for 2.5 inch SSD installation, but 3.5 inch hard drives can just drop in. I did encounter an issue here. All my test hard drives did not properly mount to this bracket. Be Quiet's bracket requires hard drives with center holes. None of my test WD or Seagate drives had this center hole. Like yes, the drive did stay in place via the top hole, but they were not properly secured. This bracket can also be moved down lower as well. The final storage spot is beside the cable management bar on this removable bracket. This supports two 2.5 inch SSDs, which are installed in the main section of the case. They are installed in a way where data and power ports face each other, which is then covered by a neat cable cover. I do like this idea, but having one SSD always upside down may be a bit OCD triggering. Personally, I would just install the SSDs on the back side of this bracket, unless you have some of those fancy RGB SSDs. Moving on to cooling, and this time I'll be testing the 800DX with white EK radiators all round. But first, for all-in-one cooler support, I had no issues here. Although I don't have any 420 AIOs, my test EK Nucleus 360 installed fine and doesn't go past the motherboard. For both radiator locations, top and front, there are no removable brackets here. What we see in the case is what you have to work with. Top radiator clearance is roughly 63mm to the top of the motherboard. For 360 radiators, they are pushed all the way towards the main side panel, which is good. This enables the radiator and fans to run past the motherboard's VRM and memory. Here I've managed to install a thick EKX360M 60mm thick radiator with fans. Going with the 360 at the top still allows for room for the cable management bar, but removing it while having a thick top radiator installed is impossible. Moving over to a 420 radiator at the top, and it's really hard to recommend this option here. 
As you can see, this EK P420M runs just about the full length of the case. This is never good, as I can tell straight away, this will most likely fail on the motherboard IO cover and will also prohibit a 420 radiator being installed at the front. And bingo, now trying to install this EK P420M at the top, you can clearly see the fans are hitting the motherboard's IO cover. This radiator is 44 millimeters thick and the only solution to a 420 at the top would be going with a 420 slim. Moving on to the front radiator location, and there is 65 millimeters of clearance from the radiator bracket to that removable air duct. As fans can be installed on the outside of this bracket in the front, this means I have the complete 65 millimeters of clearance for just the radiator. Here I have installed an EKX360M 60 millimeter thick radiator in the main section with fans on the other side at the front. Removing the plastic air duct doesn't really give you much extra clearance as the 360 radiator or fans will still fail on these tabs. For 420 radiator support at the front, Things are tight but still manageable. First, the cable management bar needs to be removed and maybe your memory depending on its height. A bit of twisting and I was able to install an EK P420M in the front. Then I could mount the cable management bar back in. Although there's room at the front for a thick 420 60mm thick radiator, there was just no way I could get an EK X420M to fit, even after removing memory and the air duct. Personally for me, the two best radiator configs will be a thick 360 at the top with a medium size 420 at the front, or two thick 360s, one at the top and one at the front. The rear location supports either a 120 or 140 millimeter fan, which is always nice to see. Personally, I would only use this for a fan rather than a radiator, given how tight the top clearances were. Alrighty guys, now that is basically most of the review there. Before I go into things like price, uh, some of the things I liked and disliked, let's take a look at the final build. So that's pretty much the build there, something clean, something simple. I really wanted to contrast the white chassis with the blue coolants and then the sort of the pinkish red for the RGB lighting for the fans and then for the memory. I would say the only slight bit of modding I did would have been for this pass through port here down the bottom from the out to the GPU. Because if I didn't do this and if I had the radiator up normally with the ports at the top, I would have had to come out and then up and it would have been a little bit busy in this area. So by flipping that radiator, I could go down this port, bit of soft tubing to the front port on that front radiator, then the back port just has some soft tube, goes up and then it goes to the back port on the top radiator and it just cleans it up really nice. Now you might be wondering, earlier in the review I covered the weird positioning for this cable cover. Now you might be wondering, well it looks pretty good in the case at the moment, well that's because I moved it to my own position closer to the motherboard. So I basically snapped one of these uh, little locating pins off, I managed to use one of them slotted it in and then I made my own hole at the top to screw this into. So as you can see it now covers the 24 pin, covers all the USB, covers all the SATA connectors and it just looks really good. So I think that definitely a, I wouldn't say an opportunity was missed but they definitely needed to move that over to the left more and have three positions rather two positions further to the right. 
Also with that SSD tray, you can clearly see those two RGB SSDs. As I mentioned earlier, RGB SSDs would look pretty sweet there, which I did manage to find some, but in saying that, the default location for that tray, I think was too far towards the front of the case. I have moved that into my own location. That's why you can see those two RGB SSDs fully on display, because default, they were behind that radiator quite a bit. And as, as you can see, most of the S or say half the SSD is covered. So I do think that needed more than one position because that is fixed, it slots in and then it pushes close and then you put this thumb screw, goes like that, put that thumb screw in and that is stuck there. I think it needed some more positions because ideally they want you to show off your SSDs and if it's just fixed, if you've got fans all in one cooler, fans and a radiator, my fans are in the front, but this radiator is quite thick, but even if you had fans or a radiator, it does just bulk it out that little bit and then you can't see any of the SSDs on display. Now some other areas I did like in the chassis, the rear side panel does have that sound dampening which is always nice to see. If you're familiar with Be Quiet back in the old days, they used to have uh, sound dampening on both side panels, that was when they had a solid side panel on the main section, but I guess tempered glass these days has changed all that where it's just the rear side panel is normally solid, so that's nice. The front RGB is also good to see. And when you do snap that front off, take it off, it does just fully disconnect as it does have those three uh, pogo pins so there's no wires coming out. Now in terms of airflow, there's a lot of airflow in this case as that's what it's orientated as. Now one thing that might trigger some of you guys is the way they've done the airflow holes on all the different areas. Just the design language of them with the front, it's just a heap of little holes. On the rear, it's slightly larger hexagon holes on the top it is a triangular, I wouldn't really say triangular holes, but uh, triangular vents that are pretty much back to back. On the very, very top dust filter, there's small holes like the front. And then on that GPU air duct is different altogether. So four different areas with different, bit of a different design language. So it's not very cohesive in the way that all the mesh panels and holes line up. So that might trigger you some guys. I just wanted to mention that in case you guys wanted the same throughout the whole case. Now one thing I wanted to cover was the styling of this Be Quiet case. Now to me, this looks like nearly every other case they have on the market. Now I use a lot of cases, Lian Li, Antec, Fantex, and like they do have one thing that is similar is a series of cases will always look the same. Like Lian Li has the O11, Fantex uh, used to have their like P500, 600, 400, all that, but now be Quiet, I think even between their different series and generations, they all look the same. And I wanna know your thoughts if it's time for something different. Should they do a redesign? Should they maybe put the PSU in the backside in the different chamber on the side, have a dual chamber or just something different? Or if you guys just want them to continue with this design. Now, one thing I wanna talk about is cable management around the back. Now, personally, I think they should have spent more time, sort of ditched this whole concept or this idea and spent more time with cable management around the back. Because with a lot of cases that are cheaper than this one, we have uh, cable management doors that close, we have cable management uh, channels, cable ma management clips, we have uh, Velcro tie downs. In this case was pretty stock standard where it just had those, those little raised little tabs that you put uh, zip ties, uh, you did get a bunch of zip ties, but that's pretty much it. You just have to run your cables along and wherever those little tabs are, you run your zip tie in and that's it, lock your cables. Then the rest of the bulk just goes under the PSU shroud cover there and that's it. So nothing special, nothing fancy if you think you're gonna get something like the Landcool design level where it comes with all of those covers and panels around the rear. Now yeah, one thing I wanna talk about, sort of the negatives, my thoughts and issues on this case. Now they're two different things. Issues I would say uh, are something you should kind of be mindful when buying this case, but thoughts is purely subjective to me. Um, my thoughts probably shouldn't stop you from buying this case because your thoughts are obviously going to be different. Uh, things like this cable cover, you might just think I'm overreacting, yeah, it, it, it's, it's fine, um, it looks fine where it was, no big deal, those SSDs, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, some other areas, but to me, I think one issue was that vertical uh, GPU bracket. They've advertised it on having vertical GPU support. When rotating that bracket, it's just a real pain, uh, especially how I mentioned that once you get your GPU in there, you can't have anything installed at the top, no fans, no radiator, no fans at the rear, everything has to be empty, and then your screwdriver might just fit if it's not long. Because the reasoning why you have to screw it from the inside is a lot of other brands when they do vertical GPU support, the actual tabs that they hold the GPU in actually stick outside the case a little bit, just a fraction, so you can actually screw your GPU in from the rear on a slight angle. The way this one's done is it's actually indented into the case, 
inside. So when you mount your GPU and you have to get your screwdriver in from the inside, it's all blocked off at the back and you cannot get it in from the back. So that's why the only issue I see with that is, is fair enough, you can, you can get away with building your system without the all-in-one cooler, without the fans, put the vertical GPU in, get all that sorted and store your all-in-one cooler. It will be a bit tight trying to get your uh, CPU cooler in, then the fans, but if you have to return your GPU, remove your vertical GPU or upgrade, you won't be able to get that GPU out. You'll have to take out the all-in-one cooler, take out the rear fan and then go from there. Like You might think that's not a big deal, but for me, I think for the price of this chassis, that should have been refined just a little bit better. Uh, water cooling support in this case wasn't too bad, wasn't the best. I, I guess it's not really aimed at water cooling support, but everywhere I've seen this case on reviews, everywhere it's got dual 420 radiator support. Well, yeah, it does have dual, but not simultaneously. There's no way you can fit two 420s in this case at once, as you saw in that review. Like these are two 360s, and even they're a little bit tight. So two 420s is a no-go. But when I say this case probably isn't designed for water cooling, um, I'll just be straight with you. The top model of this case is 230 US dollars. Now to me, that's quite expensive and that is definitely bridging into enthusiast level. And I would think that any enthusiast level case should have some medium to decent uh, water cooling support. Like there's nowhere for reservoirs. Uh, the uh, GPU air duct, I reckon needed a, a separate plate for like a pump mounting. The only way I could come up with something other than like bolting a cylinder resin pump combo to the to one of the rads, which I don't really like, was sticking something behind uh, up here, which I did. This is the EK140 distro. It's actually pretty neat. It can be used as just a uh, single reservoir with a D5, or it can be used as a two channel distro. So there's in and out and an in and out twice. So you can feed a CPU in and out and then your GPU in and out. So that's really well done. And that was a perfect match for this case. So yeah, in terms of water cooling support, not the best, but I didn't expect it to have the best. I think the 901, I will be reviewing that. So it'll be interesting to see, because the 901 is over 300 US dollars. That's more than like NV7, Evo XL, probably more than the NV9. So it'll be interesting to see how well that stacks up. Some other areas I didn't like, not an issue, just my thoughts, that when you don't use this for any reason, you don't want to use this cover, you don't want this SSD tray, you've just got this big fat hole on the back. There's nothing you can do with it. At first I thought straight away, oh, that's like a 240 spot to put fans. But in saying that, the fans, you'd have to have holes in the back side panel. I thought, well, maybe an FLT reservoir or something like that, but no. It's just one big hole that you can't do anything with. Uh, the Just going over some things I've already covered, hard to remove. Oh, one thing is the this thing. Once it's installed in your system and you have a radiator at the top, even an all-in-one cooler, you cannot remove this. The way it's designed is it has to clip in and then swing out. So it has to swing out an, uh, quite a lot before you can lift it up. You can't just lift it up straight. So I cannot remove this now because when I go to swing it out, it hits the radiator. So not so bad that way, but if you build your system and leave this to last, you will not, obviously doing a full water cooler loop, you wouldn't put it in now because it would fail on all the tubing, but if you were just doing doing with an all-in-one cooler and so on and you wanted to put this in last, you can't because you would slot it in and you wouldn't be able to get the angle to get it up behind your all-in-one cooler. So this, I think, needed a redesign, a better way to mount it than how it does. Um, the hard drive hole, that is borderline issue or problem. My thoughts is, so hard drives come with three holes, one at the very top, one lot at the very bottom and one lot in the middle. So you normally, you can mount them in any of those holes. You just need to use either two sets at once. If you obviously use one set, hard drive is going to sort of be swinging. So the way this case is done, the bracket is using the top holes and the very middle holes. They haven't thought of the bottom holes. Now, all of my test hard drives had no middle holes. So that means I could only use the top set of holes. So that was kind of, kind of swinging, like I mentioned in the review. Now, you might guys be thinking, well, who uses hard drives, but I have to think of everybody. People still use hard drives, and you might be saying, well, use the other hard drive spot. Well, the other hard drive spot comes with the, so it's weird, the external bracket, but you don't get the cages. So if you want to use the other hard drive spot, you need to spend $18 per cage to put your hard drives in, and then you can use the bottom one. So if your hard drives don't have that middle hole, you really can't use any of them. Now, another thing I want to cover is the odd coloring for the 800DX white. Now, I was sent the 800DX white, which is all white, but it's got some black accents. The top mesh filter is black. The front along this mesh, each side, this little bit here is black, and then the front IO is black. Now to me, that's a bit weird. The only reason I think they've done that is because they don't have white non-RGB fans. Because on the 800FX, 
which is the all white model that comes with these white RGB fans. That one is all white. So even the top is all white, this is all white, the front's all white, and the IO is all white. But on the 800DX, the white model, they have those black accents purely to add some contrast with the black fans because they don't have white non-RGB fans. So essentially what I've done, because I was sent the 800DX, because it had the black, I've basically turned it into the 800FX because I've used the fans from the 800FX because I wanted to use white RGB fans. And then I just painted the black to contrast it with the rest of the case. So I think having this one is the oddball out because the 800FX, you get black and white in those two, that's all white, all black. The 800DX in black is all black, black fans, but as I said, the 800DX in white is a white case with the black accents. And then there's also a fifth one, which is the Shadowbase 800. You get the black fans, but you get no RGB lighting at the front. So five models, I think, is just far too many for this lineup. They range from like nearly 150 to 230 US dollars, but I'll cover all that a little bit when I go over price. Now I wanna talk about the build a little bit. So I did paint all of the black bits. I painted it an aluminum color. It matches very, very well with the EK Satin Titanium. And I think it just contrasts much better than if I was to have these black parts. And if you're wondering why I still have black, I was sent two cases so I could work on one and then review, review the other. So that's why I've still got one whole set, which isn't in the case. And then I went with the new EK, I wouldn't say really new, but is, is relatively new, the new EK white water box. So the GPU block, they only do it for Strix at the moment. And then the socket 1700 CPU block. And I think that contrasts as well with the rest of the build. And the actual backplate does come this nice satin, silver titanium color as well. And that frosted tubing, that is the uh, Thermaltake P1000. That is the marble blue, and that just contrasts really well. You probably, if you haven't noticed, I really do like my blue coolants, whether it's teal, greenish blue, blue, any color blue I really like. And then I think that pops with that pinkish, uh, pinkish uh, RGB for the lighting and the memory and then the SSDs. I use the Be Quiet fans. Obviously, if I was to put the stock black ones in, and that's an another thing I wanna to touch base on, including fans and cases. Like, what's your preference? Did you prefer fans not to come with uh, fans not to come in cases? Would you prefer RGB ones, not RGB ones? Personally, I think uh, cases should never come with fans because everyone's going to have a choice of their own personal choice of fans and whatnot. Whereas all of the five versions of this case all come with a certain type of fan. Moving on to the price of this case. Now, starting with the Shadowbase 800, just the plain 800 that comes with the just the black fans, no RGB at the front at all. That's the only difference with that chassis, starting at 165 US. Now these prices were varying, so these are the cheapest prices I found. 165 US for the no RGB at the front. The Shadowbase 800DX, which is the black, is 185, that comes with three non-RGB fans. And then the 800DX white, which was this one, remember I did paint the accents, that is 190 US dollars. Then the Shadowbase 800FX, the black is 220 US, and then the Shadowbase 800FX white is 230, which is essentially what I turned this case in because I ditched the stock black fans, put in the white RGB fans. This is basically the 800FX with just two extra fans because you do get the four, I added six, and then I changed the, uh, changed the front. So if I did start off with the 800FX, I probably wouldn't have painted it. I would have just would have left it all white and just added some extra fans, but I was sent the DX, so that's what I had to go with. So unfortunately, it is a bit of an oddball with the amount of models they have and getting that black, um, the black trim on there. Some people might like it, it might be something different, but for me, I wanted to go with a full white theme. Now, I do want to talk about, there's a few last things I want to talk about. I want to talk about some other cases out there on the market that are competing with this price range, because I do think the Shadowbase 800 series is quite expensive. Uh, that could just be my thoughts only, um, not necessarily what you think, but to be honest, everything I've covered, the flaws, some of the issues, I don't think it's worth up to the 230 price tag it has. I think if they drop the fans, uh, people probably will have their own fans or their preferred fans to go with, not necessarily going with Be Quiet. Like these fans, there's nothing wrong with these fans. They look nice. The only downside I would say is they're not daisy chainable, but that's a bit of a gray area at the moment. It's hard for a lot of brands to get those daisy chain fans. Uh, the patent is a bit of an issue there. So I'm familiar with using those daisy chain fans and they're so easy to work with. I just haven't used normal fans that each have an RGB wire 
and a PWM wire that's just got a lot of wires to deal with at the end. And that also comes in retrospect with this next part where I can compare this to some other cases that are on the market, like the Antec P1, which I covered about four or five months ago, that comes at 150 US dollars. And now that comes with four pre-installed 140 millimeter, 30 millimeter thick performance fans. Now these aren't RGB fans. That case was all about performance. It was called the Performance One or P1. That came with some really high performance fans and that had the rear cable cover doors and it could actually fit dual 420 millimeter radiators. I did a build with two 420 millimeter rads and that comes in at 150 US dollars. The Landcool 3, 150 US dollars. Four 140 millimeter fans. Now this is a bit weird. It comes with three RGB and one non-RGB. I'm not sure why they did that, but four fans, triple radiator support. It can do a 420 at the top, 360 at the front, 360 on top of the PSU shroud. All of those brackets are removable. The top is removable, bracket front removable. The, uh, the PSU basement cover is a removable bracket. Removable brackets, I think, are a must, especially at the top, because you can install all your, all your radiators at the front, your, your hardware, and just mount it on the bracket and drop it in. It makes life much easier. So both of those cases have those. The uh, Landcool 3 also has those rear cable cover doors. They've been doing that on all their Landcool uh, series. They just work really well. The O11 Evo is yet again 150 US dollars. Now that comes with no fans, so that's the only difference here, whereas the other two previous ones came with fans. O11 Evo, no fans, 150 US dollars. So you're saving uh, between the Evo 150 and say the top of the line 800 FX, you're saving 80 US dollars. So if you have your own fans, fair enough, get the O11 Evo. It has the great radiator support, three 360 millimeter rad support, thick radiators. It has lots of extras you can buy for the case, the front mesh kit. The case can be inverted. The case has the multiple front IO locations. It's a much more of an enthusiast case and it's $80 cheaper, although it comes with no fans even pushing it to something like the Evo XL is 235 US dollars, no fan. So that's basically the same price as this, uh, the, well not this one, but the 800 FX, which comes with the fans. If you've got your own fans, you can buy the Evo XL at 235 US dollars, and you've got a super, super enthusiast case with 420 radiator support in the top, the side, and the bottom, adjustable motherboard tray up and down, removable motherboard tray, it can be inverted, adjustable I.O. So for me, I think the killer is this is getting these three, uh, sorry, the four fans included in this case that a lot of people are not going to use. Like these fans aren't bad, but they're good fans. It's just that a lot of users might not want to go of them. Uh, one, they aren't daisy chainable. Uh, that's the, the latest that's going around. It's a bit of a gray area with those fans uh, at the moment. That's why not everyone is coming out with them due to the patents around them. So it is a bit messy having to have separate fan, PWM separate fan and then RGB wires coming out. It does make a bit of a mess, but these are nice fans, but everyone likes their own fans, whether the Corsair fans, using the Corsair Link, Lanley, Uni fans and so on. So having none of these chassis having an option without any fans, I think is the real killer, because someone might want this case without the fans. Um, and then you've got things like the Fantex NV5 that just came out. I think that is, I don't even know the price set, but that is much, much cheaper than this. Um, I even think the NV7 is around the same price as this. So in saying that, there's a lot of other cases which I think are better than this case out on the market. So anyway, but yeah, I think that's enough rambling from me. Uh, to me, not too many issues on this case, mainly my thoughts, although most of them were ne uh, negative, a lot of them maybe might not stop you from buying this case. You might think that the issues I covered aren't uh, anything to worry about and you can go out and pick it up. But to me, the price I think is a, a little bit too, I wouldn't say a little bit too high, I think it is quite a bit too high because those ones I just mentioned, I think if they can ditch the fans, come out of three models, start at like 130, 140 for the non-RGB, and then the other ones around 150, 160, but even that saying, if this is 150, 160 with no fans, even the other ones I just mentioned were 150 with fans. So it's gonna be hard to justify um, really any price for this case. But anyway, I think that's it for this video. I wanna thank you guys for watching. I wanna thank Be Quiet for sending me this case to check out, and we'll see you in the next one.